All right, everybody. Welcome back to the Shame Plays Let's Play of Shadowrun Returns Dragonfall, the newly released uh, expansion slash DLC for Shadowrun Returns that takes us into the exciting world of the Berlin Flux State. Um, original campaign had us in uh, Seattle. So anyway, uh, where we left off last time is, is we had a um, run that went bad, as often happens as Shadow Run goes bad. Our team leader and my character's old friend uh, died, had jacked into the net, tried to hack something and got fried. Uh, and we basically had to fight our way out and have made our way to the cruise bossar, bossar, I don't, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, and from what I understand in, in the previous game, you, you basically, your headquarters is one place, it was the Seamstresses Union, which is sort of a bar, kind of slash, I don't know if it was a brothel or not, but it had, it was kind of a, just a, a home base, um, and evidently what they've done with Dragonfall is they've given you an, a neighborhood, to be kind of your home base, and you can choose different locations. So, let's see, the Kreuzberg, home to nearly half a million people, and until very recently, Monica Schaefer, once a melting pot of cultural diversity. It's now a chaotic mess of wealth and poverty, crime and commerce, anarchy and control. It's also home to your own little slice of Berlin, a neighborhood that locals call the Kreuzbosser, a safe port in the eye of the storm. The ride back to the cruise bosser is quiet. No one is in a talking mood. As the van veers past potholes and garbage piles, the glare of street lights and neon signs plays across your window, painting the world in a kaleidoscope of garish colors. Soon the van rounds a corner and skids to a halt in a narrow, crumbling alley. This is as far as Berlin's chaotic streets will take you. Your team wordlessly debarks the vehicle and climbs down into a disused section of the U-Bahn tunnel system. A well-kept secret, providing your team's safe passage into the cruise bosser. Your safe house waits on the other side. So here we go. Okay, so let's get inside. That's what Glory's saying. Can't happen fast enough, love. The sooner we get in, the sooner I can get drunk. Alright, that's the trick. Or shaman. So this is sort of a... A, um... It's a subway. I guess in Germany they call it the U-Bahn? I'm not sure. This is kind of neat. Uh, before I click on here, you can kind of see this graffiti. Uh, you know, just nice little touches that they do in this game. A little roach running around over here. So, all right. Uh, okay. Another thing I'm going to do, or not another thing, a thing I'm going to try, is um, to make things easier to read. I'm going to use this little um, magnifier and see if I can get it to um, work to make it a uh, little bit easier for people to read. It's not really working the way I wanted it to. Hmm. Or maybe I'll mess with it later. I was trying to make that easier for people to read. You step inside and the squalor of the disused U-Bond tunnel gives way to the warmth of your safe house. A man waits inside, silhouetted against the dim fluorescent lighting. Paul Amsel, something bad has happened, hasn't it? He steps forward, revealing a pale and expressionless face, light glinting off of steel rim glasses. Paul Amsel, your team's fixer and landlord, part deal maker, part information broker, one of the most well-connected men in Berlin. His eyes sweep across the team, he takes it all in, the grim faces, the hard stares, eager's fury, Monica's absence. I had a feeling 
How, how did she... His face has gone ashen. He swallows. Takes a moment to chew on the words before spitting them out. How did it happen? Uh, so my choice is here. Something in the vault security system got her while she was jacked in. It was over in an instant. Or the run was a setup. One minute she was cracking the safe. The next she was on the ground screaming. I'm going to go with that second option. Dietrich says, I've seen Monica hit black IC before. Um, IC is intrusion countermeasures. This, this was something worse. Glory nods, her motions robotic and spare. Monica died of a biofeedback induced stroke. Eager says, that's right. She thrust a glove finger into my chest. And this idiot stood by and let it happen. So here's my uh, options. I can brush her finger aside, and I can shove her hand away. I can ignore it. I can say nothing. I'm going to say ignore it. Say let it happen. She jacked in. She screamed. She seized. By the time we saw she was in trouble, it's already too late. So the other, the other two are, you know, kind of a little bit more aggressive. I'm going to try to play him a little calmer and cooler. Eager says, yeah, because you never bothered learning what to look for. Muscle contractions and micro tremors are good indicators of a decker in distress. I'm assuming you didn't have anyone keep an eye out for those. Nope. If you had, my friend wouldn't be lying dead in the basement. Dietrich says, oh, shove off, Eager. We were all on the lookout for physical security. Quick Lou concluded. Throwing me under the bus isn't going to help anything. Eager says, under a bus is exactly where he belongs. She turns to face Dietrich. She towers over him, but he stands his ground. I respect you, Dietrich. You know that. But you don't have my training. None of you have. Monica was good. She was the best, right? But she was also overconfident. She treated the job like it was a game. Do that long enough, and you're going to get burned. So now she's looking back at me. If you've been paying attention, you've figured all of this out on your own by now. You'd have known that Monica needed watching as much as that door. Paul's stepping back in. Enough, Eager. His voice is hoarse, his expression like, enough. Eager pushes ahead, heedless of the interruption. Her voice remains measured, but there's fire in her eyes. How many seconds pass between Monica's first convulsion and her plug getting pulled? Four? Five? Do you know how much damage biofeedback can do to a Decker's brain in five seconds? So, I've got three responses here. Looks like any of them I'm going to get interrupted. So eager, I don't. How dare you? Look, this won't. I'm going to go with look, this won't. You don't have to answer that. Of course you know. Monica died while you stood there and watched. This is all your fault. Paul, again, says that is enough. Comes out in a roar and his fist smashes down on the desk behind him. Eager, you and Quick Luke can have it out later. But I've had enough. We need to talk action. Our client sent you into something much bigger than he had led us to believe. I want to know why. Dietrich says, right there with you. This was supposed to be a milk run. Glory says, payback isn't the only reason why we need to find him. We saw something back there, something that we weren't supposed to see. It's fair to assume that we're all still in danger. Paul rises, uh, pauses and rubs his temples. Agreed. And to neutralize that danger, we need to know who we are dealing with. Let us review the events that transpired tonight. The smallest detail could be important, so hold nothing back. Um, so I can say the estate was just a front for whatever was going on in the basement. Or I can say after everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military-grade armor. Or Monica lived long enough to say a name for Schwing. I guess that's how it's Schwing! I don't know. She fought hard to tell us. It must be important. I'm going to go with that. Emsel seems taken back. He pauses for a moment before responding. The fire wing. This is unexpected. You'll have to forgive me. This brings back many unpleasant memories. Memories. Glory raises an eyebrow. Fire wing. Paul says, the most terrible of the great dragons. There are those who would disagree, but they never experienced the, the terror of living in her shadow. He glances at Glory. You are far too young to remember her, of course. But for Germans of my generation, the name of Verschwing is synonymous with chaos, destruction, and death. The dragons of today are subtle creatures, full of patience and guile. Verschwing was not. After her awakening, she went on a four-month rampage. 
that claim tens of thousands of lives. Takes a deep breath, slowly releases it. There's a haunted look in his eyes. Those were dark days. Countless men, women, and children were slaughtered, roasted alive in their homes by a creature of legend. No hope for salvation and no end in sight. It was a horror that you could not begin to understand. What stopped her? I can't imagine that a rampaging dragon would just go away on its own. Eventually, the fire wing was brought down by a man named Dr. Adrian Vauclair. Well, with the help of the Luftwaffe, of course. But it was experimental weapons designed by Dr. Vauclair that finally pierced her hide. She fell in a hell of bullets and rocket fire and crashed down in the radioactive wasteland of the, I don't know if that's SOX or the SOX, let's say, of the, of the SOX. This event was called the Dragonfall. Dun, dun, dun! Dragonfall. It all comes so clear with the title now. Safe at last from the Dragon's Wrath, Germany celebrated Vauclair as a hero. Our own Siegfried, a modern-day dragon slayer. slayer. My own practically family worshipped the man. My own family practically worshipped the man. If the Dragonfall was as important an event as you make it out to be, I'm surprised I've never heard of it. Those early years of the Awakening were traumatic, eager. Not just on a national level, but on a global scale. New species of awakened animals were being discovered daily. Within two years of the Dragonfall, the active use of magic had returned to the world. A new source of terror for a bewildered public. And in 2021, the sudden emergence of orcs and trolls gave rise to yet another wave of global panic. In light of such turmoil, is it any surprise that Dr. Vauclair and the Firewing were forgotten? Dragons were yesterday's news. He rubs his temples. Again, all of this happened decades ago. To the best of my knowledge, the story of Verschwing is a bit of historical trivia, historical trivia and nothing more. So Eager says, all right. So Monica spent her dying breath trying to tell us about a long dead dragon. She sweeps her cry eyes across the group, searching for a glimmer of insight. Finally, she gives up. Any ideas as to why? Ansel's voice trembles with frustration. Nope, it doesn't make any more sense to me than it does to you. The Dragonfall is ancient history. For, for Schwing has been dead and gone for 42 years. But there's one thing that I do know. Whatever Monica saw, whatever she was trying to tell us, it was important. He visible, visibly struggles to calm himself, takes a deep breath, and slowly releases. I will look into this, and I will find answers. In the meantime... Could you turn up anything else of value? So my two options are the estate was just a front for whatever was going on in the basement, uh, or after everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military-grade armor. I'm going to go with the first option. Ansel nods. That much is clear. Dietrich, it wasn't a minor enterprise either. That facility took serious funds to build. And time. There was more to it than we saw. Places like that don't spring up overnight. And all in secret. I doubt that the owners, whoever they are, whoever they may be, are too pleased by your escape. What else did you find? And now, we'll get to the orc. After everything went to hell, we were confronted by an orc in military-grade armor. He appeared to be the head of security. That is not much to go on. Do any details about this work come to mind? Any distinguishing features that I could look into? Dietrich. He was an older guy, for one. From the sound of his voice, I'm guessing mid to late 40s. Pretty old for an orc. And, and he'd had skin grafts. Most of his face looked like replacement material. If the grafts came from a legitimate hospital, if the grafts came from a legitimate hospital, there may be medical records. Hmm. That is something. I'll see what I can find out. Did you note anything else during the run that may be of value? And I say, or Quick Luke says, that's all we've got. Eager says, that's not much. Ansel nods, his face is drawn and haggard. It is thin, I agree. A basement, a middle-aged orc with skin grafts, and a long-forgotten world event. So 
for the next three, these three options I have um, are basically bringing the client who hired us back into it. Um, I can say, wait, we're still missing something. Who paid for this run? Or I can say, you haven't said a thing about our client yet, Paul. You holding out on us? Uh, or I can say, whoever sent us knew what we were walking into. We were set up. Um, I'm going to go with that last option. Eager says, that's obvious, but why? Paul's face reddens. I, I warned her. I told her not to take this run. But she assured me it would be a cakewalk. So I said, what, you didn't bring it to her? No, she set up the whole thing herself. Monica was approached recently a man who called himself Green Winters. He used to be a prominent activist in the F-State political scene. I'm guessing F-State is Flux State. I never much liked the man, and I certainly never trusted him. But Monica would do anything for her cause. Anything for the Flux State. Besides... Winter swore that the data he was after was crucial to ensuring the future stability of the flux. And that was all it took. So uh, we need to track down Monica's client and press him for information. Sounds like Green Winners is our best lead then. Say it sounds like Green Winners is our best lead then. Yes, most definitely. It is clear that Green Winners has involved us in something much larger than he led Monica to believe. Eager. When he finds out what happened on the run, he's probably going to rabbit. it. We need to chase him down before that happens. So we need information on green winners. We need a fast city leads. How do we find this guy? We go with, so we need information on green winners, and we need it fast. Paul says, there's a man here in the cruise blaster, a Turk named Altug Burkgazi. He owns a little soy calf shop just down the way called Cafe Sesva. The man is also a purveyor of information. I've done business with him from time to time. Do you think he would know something about Green Winners? Amsel nods. When I discovered Monica's renewed association with Green Winners, I contacted Altug. I guess I'm saying that right. I don't know, Altug. One of his people has been keeping tabs on Winners ever since. Paul's a smart man. As I said, I did not trust the man. I can say for a good reason, it would seem. I'll talk to Altug and see what he knows about Green Winners. Pragmatic. Sounds like it's about time I pay Altug a visit. Best to be cautious in our line of work. Should I go meet with Altug then? I'm going to go with the middle. Pragmatic. Sounds like it's about time I pay Altug a visit. Paul says, yes. Tell him I sent you. I will do what I can to dig into the information that you've uncovered already. Sparse though it may be. Okay, so I got five karma. Um, looks like some people kind of ran off. This is going to be a, this session will be more of a housekeeping session than anything else. I'm going to spin my karma. I have a karma now. Um, and I definitely want to up my range combat. And hmm, I guess SMG because that's what I'm carrying right now. So spray and pray hits adjacent targets, but accuracy is reduced. Critical damage percentage is visible. Pump that up. And uh, I'm going to confirm that. Save a point of karma. What have I got? Okay, I've still got my trauma kit and my healing kit. Quick, Luke, you look better in your portrait. look a little goony in your 3D self, but anyway, okay, you like that, um, let me go explore our hideout, let me go talk to Paul, Paul, 
Quick Luke. Amso peers at you through a battered pair of wire rim glasses. His eyes are bloodshot. His expression grim. Did you get the information about Green Winners? Nope. Not yet. And please continue working. We need to find that man. Alright. Uh, here's Dietrich. Let's go check him out. What's up, Dietrich? Dietrich turns his head at your approach. His aging face is traced with a network of faint scars, the legacy of too many fights over too many years. While he still retains a degree of strength and vigor, it's obvious that the shaman you see today is a shadow of his former self. Despite all of this, there's still an aura of power surrounding the man. He raises his bottle, offering it to you. Quick Luke, welcome. I've got a bottle of schnapps that he's sharing, and you've got a fallen and we've got a fallen comrade to drink to. So I could take the bottle and say to Monica Prost. I could take the bottle and say, you go ahead and toast Monica. I'm drinking to revenge. Refuse, I don't drink, but I'll join you in saluting her memory. Refuse, you drink to Monica. I have a job to focus on. Leave. Not right now, Dietrich. I've got things to see to. I'm going to say to Monica Prost. The liquor in the bottle is crystal clear, and as you raise it, you catch an intoxicating whiff of cloves and caramel. The taste of sweet corn and walnuts with a lingering aftertaste of buttery toffee. You swallow a swig and return the bottle to Dietrich's, Dietrich's outstretched hand. He takes a long pull on the bottle and locks eyes with you. Let me ask you a question, quick, Luke. What made you choose to come to Berlin? I can say, why do you want to know? I have my reasons. I'd rather not talk about it. Nothing in particular. Uh, leave. I don't have time for a long conversation, Dietrich. I just want to make pay my respects to Monica. I want to say I had my reasons. Such as? Come on, boss. I'm just trying to figure out who I'm working for here. I think that I deserve to know that much. So I guess they're taking this seriously that Monica left me in charge. It's time for a change, that's all. I remember my old crew betrayed me. I just had to drop out of sight for a while. A run went bad. and my team. I'm just going to say it was time for a change, that's all. Oh, come on, boss. Nobody moves to Berlin without a good reason. If you must know, I came back for Monica. Well then, I'm sorry for your loss. Even sorry, I mean, man can be such a thing. Look, a profound sadness crosses Dietrich's face. He takes another long swig on his bottle. Oh yes, Monica. Dietrich raises his bottle again, then closes his eyes and takes a long drink. The moment has passed, he returns his attention to you. It all comes back to our girl, doesn't it? So let me ask you, just what was your relationship with Monica anyway? I know that you two knew each other way back, but she was pretty coy about these things. Um, let's say, are you always this inquisitive? One of the things I can say, why do you want to know we're, we're treading into dangerously personal territory here? I'm just going to say, are you always this inquisitive? Yeah. I suppose. My life's an open book, so I guess I just sort of figure everyone else's will be too. So how about it? Want to fill me in? She will say, we were friends. Right there with you, I'm privileged to say so. She's one of the best women I've ever known. Anyway, I've taken enough of your time. The bottle's almost empty. Thanks for taking the time to talk. For what it's worth, I'm happy you're here with us. Oh, that's nice, teacher. Thank you. Teacher takes a final pull on the bottle, and tips it forward, pouring the rest on the ground. Rest in peace, Monica. We'll miss you, girl. So, I, you know, I don't know if those questions, I, from what I understand, this, this time around, Dragonfall, I guess your actions kind of shape maybe how the campaign unfolds, so maybe, you know, if, if, if I would have answered we were lovers or something, maybe that would have triggered something later, I don't know. But he did seem pretty nosy. Dante, the dog. As you start towards the safe house door, a large four-legged form steps around the corner. Dante, Monica's dog, an enormous mongrel of indeterminate breed. A low whimper emerges as he enters the room, head hanging low. Poor little guy. I will say that mongrels of indeterminate breed are, are my favorite dogs. Ugh, Dante. Dietrich shakes his head. Don't worry, boy. We'll look after you. At the sight of Monica's dog, Ansel's eyes well up. He inhales, but can't quite quench his breath. Catch his breath. 
He started whimpering about an hour ago. Turned into a full-blown howl. Wouldn't stop. Kept... He closes his eyes. That's when I realized something bad had happened. Looking down at those huge brown eyes, you see intelligence and sadness. He lets out a small whine and rubs his head against you. So I can scratch him behind the ears, or I can give him my... Grab Monica's bag of soy jerky treats off the table and give him one, or brush the dog's in. I'm going to give him a treat. Tate takes the treat in his mouth, but it's clear he has no appetite for it, and the jerky drops to the floor. He leans into you and looks up mournfully, pressing his ribs against your leg. I guess the dog is going with you, quick, Luke. Ansel takes a ragged breath and releases it. Then a slow, melancholy smile plays across his face. Well, perhaps a part of Monica lives on in Dante. Return to the safe house when you're finished with Altugami and from. With a little luck, he can help us locate green winners, and we can get to the bottom of this. He stares at the floor. And now, I think we should all take a moment. His lips tighten. For Monica. Alright, so I guess it's this way. If the dog's going to follow me... So, like I said, this part's going to be just kind of a housekeeping part, uh, checking out the safe house, get more of the story, eager, eager glares at you, and you can taste the bile in her stare, she clearly still blames you for Monica's death, something I can do for you, fearless leader, so I can say we need to talk about Monica, I can say yeah, you can apologize for your little burst the end in front of Paul and the rest of the team, I right, say so you can wrong about me, Eager. I intend to prove that to you. Nothing right now, Eager. I'm just going to say you're wrong about me, Eager. I intend to prove it to you. She stares at you for a moment and looks away. Best of luck with that, quick Luke. Now, please, leave me alone. So I can say not just yet. There's something else that I want to say. Step away as you wish. I'm going to say not just yet. All right, but make it quick. Can you talk about Monica? Not right now we don't. Don't push me on this quick, Luke. One of these days, we're going to hash this out, and you can talk all you like about that cluster that killed one of my best friends, but it won't be today. All right, Eager. But this conversation is over. Or I can demand an apology. You had no right to call me out like that in front of the team. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. It is for now, fearless leader. She turns away. Do us both a favor. Take the hint and go away. He really don't like me. Okay, so what's in here? Uh, okay, so this is my stash. I don't have anything in there right now. If I want, if I had equipment, I wanted to swap out. This would be the time to do it. Is there anything in here? I'm guessing. I don't know whose room this was. Maybe Monica's. Glory, she's hanging out in the bathroom, or is that in the shower? I don't know. Glory is beautiful in a waifish sort of way. Her features are almost elvish in their delicacy. But there's something cold about her that you find slightly unsettling. Not to mention that she's got completely robotic arms. Just, just wanted to point that out. What's more unsettling is her chrome. Glory is rocking a heavy loadout of cyberware from head to toe. She looks to be composed more of plastic and metal than she is of skin of bone. In the shadows, individuals such as this are anything but uncommon. But Glory Cyber is first generation. All of it. Bulky, invasive, practically museum pieces. This chrome was obsolete well before she was born. Glory. Quick Luke. She gives, shifts her at gaze to you, but her expression is as cool and placid as always. Can I help you? So I can say, hey, Glory, how you holding up? Any thoughts on what we should do next? I have a question for you, Glory, of the personal kind, or I'll talk to you later. Uh, I'm going to ask her a personal question. I'm not big on sharing sport, personal reasons. You understand, I'm sure. The edge in her voice tells you that she's not interested in continuing this conversation. So sure, I understand, I'm just going to talk to you. 
Say if you ever want to run with me again, you'll answer my questions now. Of course, we all have our secrets. People want to talk them here. Because yeah, I understand, but I still need to talk to you. She lets out a weary sigh. Okay, ask your questions, but do it quickly. I have things to do. You're a young woman. You can have started running in the shadows much more than five years ago. Tops, so what's with the vintage chrome? Say I can't help notice you seem guarded with your own. That's all I need to know. I'm going to ask her about a chrome. It was cheap. It gets the job done. She shrugs. End of discussion. I don't think so. I've known a lot of street Sams, that's short for Samurais, in my time, but I've never met anyone who would voluntarily install cyberware that old. Uh, or I could say this conversation isn't over until I say it is, to a film, or fair enough. I'm going to push with the top option. You're right. There's more to it I'm running on, but I'm not interested in talking about it. I'll say that. I'm going to say I ha can't help but notice you seem guarded. Withdraw. That's my problem, and none of your concern. So, here's my options. If whatever happened to you has impaired your ability to trust me, and it is my concern, come on, Glory, talk to me. Uh, I'm the leader of this outfit. Aside is what is and what isn't my concern, now tell me what's going on. If you could talk to me, I can help. But I'm going to go with the top option. Trust is earned, and I don't know you yet. Maybe later, when we got to know one another better, we could talk. For now, I'd prefer if you dropped it. So I'm like, okay, that's all I needed to know. Uh, so I'm going to say, any thoughts on what we should do next? Find our missing client, extract some answers. Beyond that, find another Decker. Monica won't be easy to replace, but start looking now. So I'm going to say, I'll talk to you later. She shrugs, suit yourself. Okay, so. Alright, so. Um, so I guess this is where we come up into the safe house. Got a little ladder there. Marty. Stash. Is that some kind of bike? kinds of crazy stuff and here's where I can leave okay I'm probably gonna end this at this point because it's been 30 minutes I know that was really conversation and exposition heavy and all that but I had to get that out of the way before we can continue with the story so but I got a dog hey doggy little Dante he's no dog meat if you know your uh, fallout lore but uh, he's good enough we'll take Dante and uh, let's see what happens here. I don't know if this is going to take me to loading the screen or not. Okay, so that will be our stopping point for part two. And uh, look forward to you know, part three. And thanks so much for watching. And we will see you then.